Hi, it's Pat from VG247, and uh, we're taking a look at in-game purchases or uh, in-app purchases or IAPs, as the as all the cool kids say, um, which is becoming a an increasing increasingly uh, obvious trend in um, in AAA gaming uh, specifically. You know, obviously, we see already seen a great deal of it in um, in free to play you know, because that's the model, obviously, but um, we're seeing more and more uh, of this type of monetization in premium games or ticket games, where you buy where you buy the core content up front, and then, um, as is becoming increasingly normal, you you buy extra content uh, to go over the top of it. Now, most of the time, this uh, this uh, extra content is is optional. Uh, but what we're seeing is the the level of it increase, and uh, the game that's uh, the, that's been in the headlines headlines mainly for it um, towards the uh, the end of uh, 2012 has been Assassin's Creed 3. So we're going to take a look at this one first. So if I go um, into the store, um, you can see there that uh, there's two types of currency. This is um, this is in the multiplayer side. Uh, Ubisoft's been very, very quick to sort of say that uh, all this uh, microtransaction stuff is is strictly limited to multiplayer. It doesn't spill over into single player at all. But uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about how that's uh, that that line, even that line, is being blurred in AAA gaming in a, in a little while. So I just want to show you the uh, the, the level of monetization in uh, in Assassin's Creed 3's multiplayer. Um, there is a lot of stuff you can buy, a huge amount of stuff. So, like, let's have a look at the uh, the champions packs. So, if I wanted to buy a champion, um, the butcher uh, costs one hundred and fifty um, points, like in game Eredizo points, I think they're called. Um, and you can see there that the the butcher costs twenty thousand twenty thousand. Um, I can't even remember what they're bloody called. Um, let's have a look. Abstergo points, Abstergo credits. I'm sorry. So um, I haven't got twenty thousand Abstergo credits, and so I need to uh, pony up the uh, the Eredito points. Now, obviously, I haven't actually got any of these. So um, let's see how much it will cost. It's going to cost me one hundred and fifty Eredito points to to buy the butcher. So. If I want to get some more, this is a 360 version. It takes me straight through to a, a page where I can buy them with um, with Microsoft points. So, if I want to buy a pack of 20 to buy something something light, it's going to cost me 80 Microsoft points. The butcher here costs um, 150. So, if I wanted to buy the butcher, it would cost me 80 Microsoft points. Um, Sorry, 300 Microsoft points um, to buy a pack of 155 Eredito points, um, which is what's that? That's about it's about three pounds roughly. It's about yeah, it's about three or four pounds roughly. So you can see there that um, uh, if I wanted to buy a sort of super pack uh, so of 925 Eredito points, it would cost me 1,200 Microsoft points, and that's uh, how much is that? That's about 15 quid. So, not a small amount of money. The the thing that's um, that's eyebrow raising about uh, Assassin Creed 3's uh, in in game monetization is that you can buy like everything in multiplayer um, without having to do anything. So uh, normally, people tend to get quite irate about this sort of thing um, because. Uh, obviously, it allows people to essentially sort of buy themselves better. Now, if we just have a, a quick look at the uh, what is actually on sale, if I go to the store, so you have you can buy characters or you can buy abilities. So you get an abil your ability set one, which costs fifteen Eredito points. So uh, three abilities, two perks, a kill streak, and a loss bonus. So these are these are actually sort of game-changing elements. So uh, money bombs, ability switches, knives, and so on and so forth. Silent streak. Hang on. There's lots of this. Firecrackers. 
my god. Um, yeah, absolutely loads of this, and this is um, this is very much uh, um, uh, game game changing content. Um, so your unstoppable thing there allows al opens all recently closed chase breakers and allow you to charge through a crowd without falling so i mean that that's very much something that um that would help you win you can buy it it's cost 45 very decent points um and let's have a look at just how much it costs to buy the lot so bear in mind i literally haven't played a single game of this um, so we've got the, the gameplay pack here, um, as you can see there, the gameplay three, the, the, the Assassin's Creed 3 gameplay pack gr grants immediate unlock access to all gameplay elements disregarding your content level. So this gives you everything, every set, ability, perks, streaks and bonuses for 1200 MSP. So again, that's about £15. Like the, uh, the appearance pack is here, this gives you absolutely every customization um, element in the entire game from levels 1 to 50 for uh, another 1200 Microsoft points again another 50, uh, 15 quid so for 30 quid I, I can unlock everything in Assassin's Creed 3's multiplayer like without having to play it so there's the season pass there as well which is uh, which again is, uh, is another 30 pounds that gives you um, that gives you access well it, it gives you um, savings on um on on a DLC when it starts starts popping up in uh, early 2013. So um, yeah, like what's like having uh, in in app purchases in uh, in in multiplayer games, um, like whether or not you buy them up front is, uh, is is nothing new. But the 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 level of uh, of of in app purchases in Assassin's Creed Three probably does point towards something that's uh, that's actually actually quite different and um, as we're going to see in a second um, this is probably a trend that isn't going to go away anytime soon so we've been seeing um, IAPs in AAA games for, for actually quite a while but they are normally constrained to uh, to multiplayer um, but the idea that the the sort of single player experience in a in a premium game or a AAA game where you where you buy the disc or you buy the download up front and, um, and you sort of expect to have everything included with, um, with the idea that you wouldn't add anything using real money beyond that um, is being eroded. And uh, a, a, good, uh, a good example of this probably is Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 does it, it does it like well, there's no, um, there's no necessity to buy anything and um, really the, the, uh, the stuff that you can add to um, to the single player in terms of um, uh, 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 real money it really isn't actually necessary but it is there so uh, if we have a look at the I think it's in here in downloadable content um, you can see that a couple of these weapons packs the firefight pack and the ground side resistance pack um, are usable in single player so uh, it says a single player campaign um, and uh, this one does as well so um, I'm reliably informed informed by uh, Tim from GamesOn.net I spoke to him this morning and uh, he reckons that they don't uh, they, they are largely colored that they don't really um, they don't sort of significantly impact your ability to get through the um, the campaign but they do that they do make things a bit easier apparently you know some some of the games some of the guns are are really cool and really powerful and um, but some of them are rubbish it's a bit of a mixed bag but they are there um, they cost you 160 bioware points a go so let's uh, let's just take a look at that and see how much they cost so it instantly just takes me through to a page where I can pay so um, 1600 bioware points costs um, 13 13 pounds so um, they're not very expensive like uh, 400 400 bioware points for three quid so the I mean the, these packs really really don't cost a huge amount of money but um, but there they are now EA is um, is uh, well renowned for sort of monetizing multiplayer. I'm going to take a, a, a quick look at that. So as you see, there's a store right right in the uh, in the multiplayer. As you kind of you know start to expect now, you know this this kind of thing does 
um, does happen um, in virtually, you know, or certainly in, in a great many um, AAA games. It has been happening for quite a while. I mean, if you think of games like Gears of War 3, there's a huge amount of, um, of uh, items that are available for multiplayer, things like weapons, shields, armor. You know, you can just buy them. Ooh, there's my N7 Day loyalty pack. I'm going to redeem that. Yes, please. Let's see what I get. And um, this is free. So I get. Ooh, I've got a sniper rifle. See, see, see how awesome it is when you get new stuff. Um, unfortunately, everything else I have to now pay for either with in-game currency or with um, or with money. So if we have a look at the premium specs pack, there we go. It's 240 um, Bioware points. So it's a couple of quid basically. Um, really not not that much money, but you still do have to pay for it, or you can grind up your, your credits in, in, in the game itself. But, as I said, the, uh, the idea that, um, that this stuff simply doesn't appear in, uh, in single player, and that it would only uh, be restricted to multiplayer, it, um, is being eroded, um, even, even if uh, Mass Effect 3's efforts to do it are, are pretty slight. Um, this year, the, the entire notion of having uh, in-app purchases in single-player and AAA games really did take a, a turn for the more serious. So we've just seen the release of Forza Horizon. Um, and if I've seen uh, any game this year that probably signals where, where um, in-game purchases are going, where single-player design may be going in general, it's, um, it's Forza. Now, every single car in Forza Horizon is purchasable with real money. Now, th this, as far as I'm aware, is pretty unique. I, don't, I can't think of a single other game where you can basically buy every sort of collectible item in the single player side of the game with, uh, with, with real money. It's normally, as I've said many times, restrained to... Uh, to uh, multiplayer, so I'm not sure if this is sort of actively by design, because uh, Forza, Forza normally, the uh, the sort of uh, the, the 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 boundary between single player and, and multiplayer in Forza is actually um, quite uh, uh, very thin. You know the the. The, the multiplayer game is essentially the single player game with other people. The difference between the difference with Forza Horizon, this is a new thing for the Forza franchise, is that it, it's got a, a properly distinct single player campaign. Um, so uh, all of these features were actually apparently available in um, they, they were in Forza Four. I'm not like a massive sim sim fan, so I didn't play much of Forza Four at all, so I didn't really notice any of this. But um, you can you can buy anything. So let's just show you uh, how, how this actually works. So I'm entering this race here, the, the Oakley Heat Wave, um, and I don't have a car um, that's, uh, that's eligible for the event. So basically, I need, to, I need to buy a new one. Now, the ramifications for this are actually quite uh, quite extreme. I mean, this, this really could change uh, how single-player games are, are actually made if this becomes a, becomes a trend. Because basically to progress now, I have to get a new car. Now, I can, in this instance, I can afford some of these. I've got 170,000 credits, as you see up there, which um, you know, I've, I've, I've got from playing the game. But say I wanted this Ferrari here, which would probably allow me to win the race. Um, it's a quarter of a million credits and I don't have it. So um, what I would normally do in, in pretty much any other single player game is I would simply go out and grind the game or whatever to get the money. Um, in Forza Horizon though, I can try to buy it with tokens. So tokens are real money. So this car costs three tokens. So it dumps me out to Xbox Live Marketplace and a five token pack costs 400 uh, Microsoft points, which is about five quid. I'm not going to buy that, thank you. Um, let's just get out of here. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this is that everything I buy in the single player um, in, in Forza essentially 
does directly impact my ability to get through the campaign. Um, it makes it easier. If I buy a faster car, it makes it easier for me to, to progress. Um, um, as, it, as is fairly obvious, all of this stuff sort of gets taken over into uh, into multiplayer. But I'm going to show you. Oops, sorry, that's the the incredible access rewind feature. Uh, I'm just going to show you the uh, the map. Um, I played quite a bit of this, so so like loads of bits unlocked. So here's the map. Um, but again, I can uh, probably a clear indication of how. Uh, of, how sort of pervasive like in-app purchases are to uh, to Forza Horizon is I can buy a treasure map. The treasure map reveals the locations of every discount site in the game. So basically, if I uh, if I buy this map, then I'll be able to see on the map everywhere where there's a discount sign. Uh, if I go then go around and knock them all over in my car, then the parts to upgrade my cars become cheaper. So the game becomes easier. Like this, this is a, it's, it's, it's very straightforward. This, this is going to make the game easier for me. So um, to buy this item is going to cost me five tokens. There we go. 400 Microsoft points. So for five pounds, on top of the fact that, um, you know, you will have already bought this game for like 40 pounds or whatever, you can essentially make the entire process of completing it much, much easier. Now, is this a trend? I don't know. Like I said, you know, Forza is a, is, is a it's quite sort of unique in that um, it's sort of single player and multiplayer elements are fairly close to each other. But um, I don't think this is happening by accident, quite frankly. And I think, I think the fact that um, Assassin's Creed 3's uh, multiplayer is, is completely open to, to IAPs is probably uh, an indication, if you sort of take Forza into account as well, of, uh, of where things may be going over the next couple of years. Um, it's, I'm afraid it's something you simply may have to get used to. Um, in single player and in multiplayer, and uh, I think the uh, the, the ramifications of that could be could be quite extreme. Certainly, in, in sort of single player design, you know, you, you could be in a, in a place where developers could be creating single player experiences that edge you towards um, buying uh, IAPs to make things easier instead of like going the long route and actually playing playing the game to get the stuff that you would normally get um, in a, in a in a game that was maybe made uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so there you go. Do with that as you will. Many thanks for watching and um, yeah, I'll see you soon.